Good day, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to offer you my presentation at the key steps for building successful collaborative research with hard to reach communities today. Uh, I'm presenting on behalf of my team and uh, industry partners and the research partners. First of all, I wish to acknowledge uh, this magnificent land that I'm uh, presenting today is the traditional land of the Kona people and we respect their spiritual relationship with their country. I also wish to uh, bow to the soul of Australia for allowing me to build my new life and for providing me and my family with the opportunity to develop and be of service to other people nationally and internationally in the past 34 years. As you, many and most of you would know, um, refugee youth uh, are very much um, uh, challenged by, as they grow and living in two different cultures. And they, they, these challenges or this struggle, continuous struggle that they go through with the with the bringing up uh, or being bring up in, in the homeland culture, family culture, and also on the other hand, with the mainstream uh, or majority culture, and just wanting to um, fit with both cultures. And sometimes these cultures are not um, uh, so much matching, and then it creates lots of challenges for, for them. And they may have different experiences while they are and uh, they are settling in in the new culture what i'm going to present today the um the key elements of those uh, barriers and uh, as well as enablers of doing research for this population group um, and how we have done it that it led to uh, a successful uh, conduct of this project and what we have done the project itself called Pathways to Active Citizenship, Refugee Youth and the Transition from School to Further Education, Training and Employment. Uh, two universities were involved, Adelaide University and a University of South Australia as the host uh, um, university for conducting this research. And we had two industry partners, MISA and AMRC. Within the project, we aim to thoroughly investigate the education and employment outcomes among refugee youth who were 15 to 24 years uh, old in, uh, living in South Australia uh, and with the view to uh, influence education, training and their employment uh, and employment policy and practice. Um, the secondary aims of our project was to identify the facilitators and barriers to successful transition from school to further education and employment. And we um, wanted to map out this, the support system that this is uh, accessed by, by these youth and um, the, the difficulties that they were experiencing through the education and employment system. We wanted also to investigate the extent of use and family awareness of these uh, um, supports, if available uh, through the education and training and employment pathways, and whether they were, uh, they were able to access those services. Um, our um, method was uh, a mixed method approach in the, uh, in the design of the study that we conducted and um, advocacy transformative approach was the foundational methodological approach that we, we took for this mixed method uh, research that we did. In the qualitative um, aspect, the quantitative aspect of the research to this survey, we conducted a survey for 600 um, youth uh, from three different um, um, migration regions clustered them into Africa, Asia, and Middle East. And then we interviewed for the, our qualitative uh, parts of this study, we uh, interviewed individually um, youth, their parents, and the teachers uh, as well from those three uh, regions. Uh, we had about 14 population groups that we clustered on, on the, these three um, major regional uh, 
uh, population groups, um, South Asia, Middle East, and also Africa. Uh, and they had different representations, but majority were from, uh, from uh, Sudan, from um, Afghanistan, from Syria, from uh, Nepal and Burma, and the rest, um, they are captured on this slide. Um, they are on the different um, geographical locations that they came from of those three uh, regions. Uh, we um, looked into the, uh, the barriers to effective research with refugees, that they were um, quite um, a fair bit of uh, uh, barriers and challenges. Um, and we have identified them in the past research, but the, the, with this research was also no exceptions. And with many of you who have done a research in this area, you would know the uh, cultural and linguistic differences between the researchers and the participants is one of those challenges, because uh, also uh, you may be very competent in dealing with them, but still there are lots of differences between, between different cultures of the participants and the researchers that us were doing it. Uh, another challenge that we faced were the non-availability of culturally validated research tools that we all are aware of. Uh, the um, mistrust uh, among participants towards researchers and their studies who, uh, has been always been a challenge because you need a convincing argument to the participants that this is uh, benefiting them and the generation to come of this kind, that how we can help and support them, we needed to build that trust relationship as well. The difficulties that um, usually um, in relation to representative samples, we wanted to reach hard, uh, to reach the hard to reach communities and that was um, challenging by the itself. Um, and also, of course, uh, challenges with the industry partners that we are all working in partnership, but still they, they come and drive from a different perspective, from more a service delivery perspective. As for our researchers, they come from the, again, the research conduct perspective, but bringing the two, uh, the two perspectives together was um, as something of consideration uh, always has been in all uh, the research, but uh, we were very fortunate because we had the long term relationship with the industry partners that we were partnering with, with this research. What we found three positive relationships um, that we built were uh, critically important and vital for the successful conduct of this research, which I'm going through uh, them. One was the relationship with the industry partners themselves. Um, the other one was the relationship, um, building relationship uh, with the bilingual youth, youth force workers that we used it as uh, the um, research brokers uh, or cultural brokers that uh, they uh, linked um, us as researchers to their communities and always I've seen them as um, building the bridge between researchers and communities and they were very, very, uh, um, a very important component of um, data collection um, and successful data collection and that building that relationship was critically important. The other uh, important positive relationship was building um, the trust between the researchers and the research participants that was also of critical importance, which I'll go through in, de in details. Um, with, as I mentioned, with uh, in the first relationship um, was absolutely critically important because of the challenges usually with the industry partners coming from, again, more the, uh, of the service delivery perspective and how we could bring both of the perspectives of the researchers um, conducting these ethically and informed um, and um, making um, the at the voice of the participants through research and then um, bringing uh, industry partners in in the, in the same in the same um, way of we wanted to we wanted to conduct uh, in the way that they wanted also to be conducted was uh, uh, critically important and we were very fortunate to build that uh, 
uh, that relationship, uh, a matter of trust and respect for the expertise that they brought into the team. And it was of critical importance and expertise and experience that we brought to the team as uh, researchers. And it worked uh, as the first step and most critical step um, that we took and this positive relationship was the foundation for the other two relationships, I must admit. The, the other relationship, as I mentioned, with the bilingual uh, youth workers, because uh, they were, again, the, um, the key uh, elements of our success to um, collecting um, over 600, um, 600 um, questionnaires from these participants through the surveys that they did. And sometimes they had um, um, their own challenges because of they were working in other places, including working with the industry partners that they were involved and we, they needed to make time available. We gave them uh, three days full training for them to build confidence and familiarity with the project and also to conduct uh, the research ethically and more sensitively in the way that we wanted to conduct the research. And it gave them also a lot of benefits of affiliating with uh, a research of the um, high level as uh, the ARC project. And for them, it was beneficial for us, was definitely very beneficial. And that positive relationship was another foundational level of building um, that success story for our project. The, the last um, positive relationship was critically, again, important for the success of the project was um, building that relationship with participants and for them to build a convincing argument that it is really um, the, the way that we can improve the situation and condition that they have gone through if they have been disadvantaged and how we could improve that situation and how we could change the policy for future generation that they, they are coming of this kind and they need to, um, they need to have uh, uh, success stories built on their experience, on these participants' experience. And they perfectly understood and they were willing to, um, to give us a hand and wholeheartedly they move forward. And that's why we were able to collect these many, um, many questions from them. We developed uh, instruments, uh, and as I mentioned, always um, finding instruments were very, um, have been always very critically important um, and uh, lacking in the sector in cross cultural environment. Um, but we had uh, different criteria, and we had experts within the team that we could we could develop that instrument. That it was um, again a collation of some very well-known instruments that it was used in previous research and other, um, uh, other cross-cultural research. And, um, and we needed the language to be right and, um, and also suitable for the, for the aim of the project and, and targeting that. I don't go through the details of the survey instruments. Um, but we looked into um, acculturation and adaptation, emotional health and well-being, their resilience, their mood, the family functioning, schooling experiences that they had, um, their help-seeking behaviors, how they, uh, they um, reached out to get help if they needed help, and their employment experiences, and of course, social de demographic uh, sections, which was a, a large section. We have developed a, um, um, or published a paper, a full paper in that regard, and it is published uh, with the Australian Community Psychologist, which you could have a full uh, access to. Um, and the details are, are here. Or saying all of that, the research team and the industry partners, we were all in and had uh, a common, common goal, uh, a drive a research that we had as a value driven research was that we had the common goals and we had our own inspiration and one of the inspirations was um, the, the very important statement that always has stayed with me as, a, as an advocate uh, for um, over 30 years for this pop with working with these population vulnerable populations 
we, if they change that we and uh, you want to see in the world by Mahatma Gandhi, which is critically important that we make something uh, uh, a difference in their lives. And if we want to do it, we have to start from ourselves. And the other one was um, and taking a strength-based approach, not so much looking into the past, although we reflected on the past experience, but um, we moving to the future and what we could do for, for growth and development and the future. And we were very much inspired by uh, Sri Chumma's uh, golden statement, we do not belong to the past, we belong to the future. The future that grows and grows in the immediacy of today. Thank you so much for uh, for listening, and I hope you enjoy the conference. Thank you. <laughs>